Hi, my name's Edward Gomez and I'm the Education Director for Las Comas Observatory. I also run the Global Sky Partners programme. The mission of Las Comas Observatory is to advance our understanding of the universe through science and education with our unique global telescope network. The two people that you'll interact with on the Global Sky Partners programme is myself, Education Director Edward Gomez, and Alice Hopkinson, who is our Education Content Developer. I'll give you some information about LCO, the telescopes that you can use and the resources that we have. The Global Sky Partners programme is a 12-month programme it runs from the 1st of August through to the 31st of July the following year. Uh, you can use our 40 centimetre class telescopes, of which there are 10 distributed around the world. You'll use them in Q mode and you only have access to imaging on those telescopes. No spectrographs. But we're here to help. Myself and Alice are always here to help you in your programme. So please do contact us if you have any questions. And remember that if you succeed, then we succeed as well. So we really do want to help you in your programme. Our current operational network has three classes of telescope. The two metre telescopes, which were acquired in 2005. The one metre telescopes, which were installed and built in 2012, there are 13 of those. And the 40 centimetre telescopes, which were completed in 2017. Throughout this year, we're gradually replacing the 40 centimetre telescopes for very similar telescopes in terms of size, uh, but with much better cameras on them. So, you may see some changes throughout the next. So you can see we have lots of telescopes, 25 telescopes located at seven locations around the world. The ones highlighted in blue are the ones that you'll be using as part of the Global Sky Partners program. Then normally in enclosures like this, uh, these are called Akawan enclosures, and the telescopes, wherever they are, will be fully exposed to the sky when they're operating. The one metre telescopes are in their own individual domes and the two metre telescopes are also in enclosures very much like this. So where the telescope is fully exposed to the sky. We only have two two metre telescopes uh, at, and at those sites, the 40 centimetre telescopes are inside the enclosure with the two metre telescopes. This is what the new plane wave telescope looks like. We've built all of these systems ourselves and tested them in our headquarters in Santa Barbara in California. The software was written by us. The uh, axes, the, the mount that the telescope sits on was designed and built in-house by us. And uh, the one meter telescopes were. But the 40 centimeter telescopes are off the shelf, both the, the tube, the telescope tube, and the instruments, the cameras. So I'll give you a tour of some of our observatory sites. This is Halekala in Maui, and we have one two meter and two 40 centimeter telescopes here. In Chile, in, uh, at Cerro Tololo, we have two 40 centimeters and three one meter telescopes. At McDonald Observatory in Texas, US, we have two one meter telescopes and one 40 centimeter telescope. And at Tenerife, the Canary Islands, we have two 40 centimetre telescopes and two one metre telescopes. In South Africa, in Sutherland, we have three one metre telescopes and one 40 centimetre. And finally, at our largest site, Siding Spring in Australia, we have two one metre telescopes, two 40 centimetre telescopes and one two metre telescope. Uniting all of those telescopes, we have CERAL. This is our autonomous robotic scheduler. CERAL stands for Scheduling Efficiently and Robotically on Las Cumbres Observatory. CERAL allows you to make a request, not to an individual telescope, but to LCO as a whole. 
with your requirements. You may want a particular target to be observed in the next two weeks. Serral will take all of the hard work out of that process by automatically and dynamically moving your observation request around our network according to any weather constraints or engineering problems or other high priority observations that may happen. So some key information about the program again. All the time is queue scheduled. The data is public instantly and is available on our open access archive. We have 10 40 centimeter telescopes and it's imaging only. Here are some useful links and I'll provide you with a PDF copy of this so that you can see the links directly. Now I'll share my screen and demo some of the tools that we have. First of all, I'm going to demonstrate our kiosk interface. This is a simplified observing interface where you can get a high quality picture of the sky with a few clicks. I'm going to log in with my username and password now. So you can see that it's uh, logged me in and it's come up with my project, Global Sky Clubs. And uh, you can see that it has suggestions or catalogue lookup. I'm going to choose suggestions. So we can either take a picture of the moon, a planet, a galaxy, a star cluster or a nebula. Now those last three if I click them, I'll be presented with six suggestions. I'm going to try Nebula first. Here are the six suggestions. There's the catalogue name and a small description of each of them. I'm going to try M20. You can see the full description there. If I'm happy with that, I can then click Submit and that's my observation request done. And there you go. You can now see that the request has been submitted successfully and in the past observations block on the right hand side you can see that M20 has appeared with a status of pending. You can see my other observations here as well. Let's have a look at one of them. NGC891. If you want to have a look at the image that was obtained you click get image. And there you go you can see a full colour image that's automatically generated just for you. Now if you wanted to get some other observations you can go back to the left hand side. Say we knew that we wanted to observe a particular object and we knew that it, what its catalogue name was. For example NGC 1502. We can search for that. It says a tick for target selected coordinates found and I could click submit there. Now because the list of suggestions has pre-selected targets which we know will be visible. Because I chose an object that wasn't from that list, this object is not currently visible from any of the Laskin Risk Observatory sites. And this is what this message in red is telling us. This interface is highly simplified, so you can't choose your own filters or exposure times, but we do have a way that you can do that in our full observing portal. If you click on any of your targets on the right hand side, let's click on the M20 observation that I just made. It'll open it in our observing portal and you can see all the details that kiosk automatically filled in for us here an exposure time of 120 and a filter of V. That's green. I'm going to go ahead and log into this so that we can submit some more observations. Now this interface is a lot more powerful but also a lot more complex than Kiosk. To submit an observation, you go to the handy menu bar option, Submit Observation. Give your observation a name. Let's choose my picture of M101. Proposal you have to select. And then you can 
leave the rest of the options. Now you have to think of an exposure time and a filter that you want to set. M101 is a galaxy, so I'm going to choose a fairly long exposure, two minutes. Then you need to know what the filters correspond to. Bessel B, that's in the blue part of the spectrum. And now here comes the target. You can either type in the object name and the portal will look up the coordinates for you, or you can type in the coordinates yourself. If, for example, you want your image to be slightly off center, then scroll down to start and end. By default, the start time is now and the end time is in 24 hours. I'm going to extend that to a week. You can see that the little graph here on the left shows all of the times and from all of the sites that my target is visible. It's visible from our two northern hemisphere sites of Haleakala and Taidi, which is in the Canary Islands. And you can see that there's plenty of availability there. Now that's only going to take one image, so I'll get a grey scale image from that. If you want to do a three colour image, you'll need to select a V filter and an R filter. But I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. And there's just a confirmation of how much time will be debited from my account. And now you can see a summary of all of the information that we put in. Now you don't only have the option of objects that are fixed in the night sky. If I create a new observation request, let's do an asteroid. So again we run through the same information as before. I'm going to put a shorter exposure time in now and I'm going to use the PanStars W. This is a wide filter in terms of wavelength, so it'll capture more light than the other filters. Then, before you type the name, change the type to non-sidereal and the boxes change. MPC Minor Planet is what we want for an asteroid. I'm going to try the asteroid name 2023 NA1. And there you go, the system has found the orbital elements. This allows the scheduler, Serral, to calculate where the asteroid will be during our observing window. And you can see now that in the next 24 hours, this asteroid is visible from lots of different sites. Now with an asteroid, you don't just normally want to get one observation because you won't be able to see it moving. So I'm going to go ahead and take three observations. And then in that sequence, we can see the asteroid moving. And I'm going to increase this to three days, just to give us more opportunities to make this observation. If I'm happy with all of those details, I can click on Submit Request. And OK again. The final thing that I want to show you is our open access archive. So I'll go to the home and I'll pick an observation that I've already made, which we have data for. So this observation I could see on the front on the home page of the observing portal, it was in a completed state. So this is the tab that we saw before, which has the details of the observation request. There are three other tabs about the scheduling, the visibility of the target during the time window, and finally the data. If you click on data, this is where you get to see small thumbnails of the observation that you've made, and also some links to download the data. Now you can download the data directly from here. You want to download the reduced data and not the raw data. 
This has had pipeline calibration performed on it, so it's the highest quality observation that we can provide you with. But we can also view this on the archive. So I'm going to click this button. It'll open up a new tab and it'll show your observation data inside our open access archive. Now this is more or less the same information that we had before. And now it says Banzai instead of reduced. These little plus signs will give you some more information. You can view the headers of, the, of each of these images. These tell you all sorts of information about the specifics, not only of the observation, but of the weather conditions and other conditions to do with the telescope at the time of your observation. So you can see the altitude that the object was in the sky. You can also see all of that information inside the data file too. If you wanted to download all of this data, or even just some of it, you can check on the checkboxes here. We can also filter this data by reduction level. Banzai is the name of our data reduction and calibration pipeline. So if I only want to see Banzai data, I can select Banzai from the side and then select all and click download. Now alongside the image data, you can also download the catalog associated with each file. As part of the calibration pipeline, we identify any sources in the image. These sources are normally stars. And we identify those in terms of sky coordinates and RAN DAC. So if you wanted to download the image, you can just click on download. However, if you only want the catalog files, click on the downward arrow and select zip download catalog only. That's a very brief introduction to some of our resources. In addition to this, we, we also have compiled an observing information page for Global Sky Partners. We have a, a separate screencast on how to use the observing portal. And we have various different information pages that you can look up about time series observations, target visibility, and using our FITS files, which are in a compressed format. As I've said before, we're here to help. Please do let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you in your program. Because remember, if you succeed, we succeed too. I look forward to being in touch and working with you on the Global Sky Partners program. Goodbye for now.